Hey everybody, today I'm going to play around with oil pastels. I'm not using them for the very first time because I've used them off camera a little bit, but it's the first time that I'm really trying to create something, like a finished piece from it. And the first piece that I'm creating here is kind of a comfort zone motif for me. It is fruits and fruit slices. And the main challenge here for me is that I got a pastel colored set that only has pastel colors. And I don't know why I just didn't really think this through because I mean, they're called oil pastels. And I don't know why I didn't think that they would only be pastel colors because I thought the pastel is for the art supply name, if that makes any sense. Not all oil pastels come in pastel colors, but these do. <laughs> and the colors are very pretty. There are a lot of colors in this set. I will try to leave a link to this one. This is not sponsored and I did buy these with my own money. These are from Paul Rubens and I really like the colors, but there's just no contrast in here because all of them are very light colored and very light toned. So my main uh, point here and the main thing I was trying to achieve was to get as much contrast as I can with just using pastel colors. And it's not easy, but I think think the result is okay looking, but I will definitely get more colors for some more depth and some more contrast and saturation in my drawings, paintings, whatever you want to call that. And I had a lot of fun with this. I am using Arches watercolor paper just because I had it on hand and it was a really good size. I have a lot of watercolor paper and I have no idea what paper would actually be ideal for this. But I was actually really surprised at how well it worked with this paper. You're going to see in just a bit that I blended all of this roughness with some blending stomps. So right now you can really see through the whites of the paper. And if you like that look, then you can just leave it like that. But I personally like to blend everything a little bit, get everything to be a little bit smoother. And it worked really well with this paper. I was actually uh, positively surprised. So I used the paper for another piece and I had no real issues with it. I might try some softer paper as well, like paper with less texture is what I mean because then you might not get as much of the roughness, but then maybe the paper won't hold the oil pastels as much. I'm still experimenting a little bit, so if you know a lot about these, then go ahead and give me your advice if you want to. But I'll just continue playing with them and playing with the papers that I have. I might get some more paper because I wanted to tr really try some hot press watercolor paper for gouache. So I will probably have this here as well. I also have some Bristol board and stuff, but that stuff is really smooth. So I don't think that it will really hold these but we will see. The main thing with these is they're like crayons, but extremely soft. So if you like playing around with crayons, then you might enjoy these because they are similar in the way, at least that I use them here. There's a lot of ways that you can use them. You can theoretically put them on a palette knife and then kind of scrape them onto your you could even use canvas or paper and you can get a lot of different textures and a lot of do a lot of techniques with that 
you could use them in all kinds of ways. I also, you can see that I'm now using the blending stamp and it just blends so amazingly. These are from Stettler. I have some of those when I was using pastels and they also work really well with oil pastels. And you can theoretically use this blending stamp, put a little bit of the oil pastel just on it and then just draw paint whatever you want to call it with that little bit on your blending stamp and you can get it into the paper a little bit more and you can get maybe a little bit more detail. The main issue with these is that it's quite hard to get detail if you're just drawing onto the paper directly. So if you're doing pieces where you want to do smaller details, first of all, then maybe this is not the perfect perfect medium but you could still do a little bit of detail I've seen people like I said with a palette knife or with other tools applying these I don't know if you can also sharpen them I would not be very happy to do that because it would feel like a waste because you're then shaving off a bunch of the stuff but I mean theoretically you could use a knife and sharpen it like that and then use the stuff that you cut off and use that with a pellet knife. So there's a lot of ways to play around with these to use them. I've seen people use these for pretty realistic paintings or very detailed paintings as well. But honestly, whenever I use a medium like this, I also really love to use water-soluble wax crayons. These are also fun. These are the types of things that I gravitate towards when I feel a little bit overwhelmed, I feel a little bit blocked. And I know that with my art, I sometimes have the issue that I focus on the details a lot and I love blending, I love gouache and watercolors and all kinds of mediums where you can blend and control and paint and just really get a lot of details in if you want to and sometimes I really really enjoy that but then sometimes I do get overwhelmed and get stuck with that and trying to make every stroke look perfect and then these times are ideal to then in between choose a medium like this where I will just play around with it and it is a little bit messy and that's good because it kind of gives me it gets me in a little bit of a more playful mood and that's really what I needed here I needed something that's a little bit more chill and because I know that this is a medium that I don't use as much my stakes aren't that high I'm doing things that I am more comfortable with I'm doing kind of comfort zone pieces here but with a new medium so it's a good mix of a challenge because it's something that I'm not as used to but also something that's more easy because it is a uh, type of picture that I have created before. So if you feel a little bit stuck, a little bit overwhelmed with your art, or you just want something that's a little bit more playful, and you usually use a different type of medium, if you usually use colored pencils or paint or do digital art, maybe in between something like this could be really fun. I know a lot of people have this as their pri primary medium as well, so obviously that's cool too but especially if you are already creative and you're looking for something fun in between this could be it this is what the first one looks like and I'm gonna do another one on this same paper as well so to remove the paper from the block I use a palette knife because then you can get it off really easily don't try to remove watercolor paper or any paper that comes in these blocks just by ripping it off because you're gonna rip the paper this is something I learned the hard way so carefully just get it off with an envelope opener or a butter knife or a palette knife like I have here and then I started another piece and I recently came across a picture I believe it was on Pinterest where I saw a snail on a mushroom 
And then I pinned it. <laughs> now my entire Pinterest feed is full of these snails and mushrooms. And I mean, they're adorable. They're these beautiful mushrooms. And then the snail is kind of trying to get onto a branch that's close or trying to get a drop, a raindrop from a, a different branch. Or one of the snails is looking down to the other one. They're looking at each other. The uh, one is on the ground and one is on the mushroom. I hope that makes sense. I would insert pictures, but I really don't want to break any copyright things because if you have pictures on Pinterest, they're most likely not royalty free. So here I changed the reference picture a lot. You probably couldn't tell which one it was exactly. Most likely I also changed the colors and switched it up and combined pictures. I do that whenever I really like a reference, but it is not royalty free or I don't have the rights for it, but I want to create some art inspired by it. Then I just make sure that I change the picture quite a bit so it doesn't really break any any copyright things. Obviously, I'm not a lawyer and I can't tell you where to draw the line here, literally draw. <laughs> and I mean, it really depends on how much you change from the reference here. It doesn't really look that similar anymore. So it's really not an issue anymore. But this is the reason sometimes why I won't show you the reference picture because I I just don't have the rights to it. And if you want to recreate something like that, I usually generally encourage you to change it up however you want to change up the colors. You can change the shape of the mushroom or the plants that you can see me draw around it right now. Whatever you want to do, you can take these things as inspiration and you don't have to completely follow along to what I do do. That's generally how I like to work and how I approach art. I get inspired and then kind of do my own thing. But I mean, honestly, either way is fine. Every person is different. Some people, they like to follow along to a step-by-step -step guide and other people, they just take what they want, want to do and leave the rest. Either way is fine. I'm really going on a bit of a tangent here. You can see that I also tried to combine a lot of colors. So I tried to get a, a lot of variety in my highlights and shadows as much as I can with all of these pastel colors. And there's a lot of different colors on here. They're just all in the same range. None of them are significantly darker or more saturated. All of them are pastels. This is really a pastel color set and it's not really a standalone set, which is kind of sad because it is quite a big set. I don't remember how much I paid for this, but I don't know. I don't know why I didn't really think this through in terms of color. I've also had this set for quite a long time and I played around with it off camera a while ago and I even filmed me unpacking it in, I don't know, it's been at least a year ago and now I'm finally using these for the first time on camera and I, I really love this medium, especially to loosen up in between. And I find myself not, not really pressuring myself so much with these types of mediums. And I really enjoy that fact every now and then. I think I really need a balance in my art where I do these fun, quick, doodly types of things in between. I wouldn't call this a doodle per se, but I do sometimes create very simple things in my sketchbooks and I need that every now and then. And then some time after doing that for a long time, I will get bored of that and I will want to create something that's a little bit more sophisticated and takes a little bit longer and where really can get lost in the details. And I encourage you to kind of find the balance that is right for you. 
like I said earlier, everyone is different in their artistic approach. And some people, they really just want to do quicker and simpler things that really look stylized. And other people, they want to do super realistic stuff and large canvases and Everything on that spectrum is valid and I just hope you have a lot of fun with art. I hope this inspired you. And if you want to see some more fun art ideas, then check out this video next.